The knights have assembled! What's up guys, it's Apollo here and welcome back to another historical battle in 1212 AD, the mod for Total War Attila. This is the Siege of Noise, which I'm pretty sure is how you pronounce it. I'm not 100% sure. I mean, you guys know, I'm, I'm usually pretty spot on when I pronounce things. Okay, not really. I'm usually always wrong, but I think it's noise and it's it's like saying nice, but in a very obnoxious way. Noise. Uh, anyways, it is the 29th of July, 1474, and Char Charles the Bold marches with his Burgundians and his mercenaries to, to surround the city of Neuss, which is owned or controlled by the Holy Roman Empire. Now, this is during the Burgundian Wars, but there's some other interesting pieces that I want to explain in the intro of this video. If you guys don't really care about the history and you just want to see people slaughter each other, well, you could skip ahead on this time marker. Uh, no, yeah, I'm not offended, all right? Y that's fine. You just want to see bloodshed. You're just crazy. I don't know. Uh, but for the rest of you guys who want to learn some history, because you guys know I am a history expert on all things European history. <laughs> Okay, I'm not, but I do enjoy it, and I spent many hours studying this battle. Okay, not really. I spent five minutes on Wikipedia, but I will explain my shallow knowledge to you guys, and I'm sure there's some Germans and Frenchmen or really anyone who knows European history who can explain more or share some cool facts or correct me if I misspeak here down in the comments down below, which I would I would love to read because I do want to learn more about this uh, this battle. So, to my understanding, like I said, it's during the Burgundian Wars, but this siege battle, we must go back before we start in uh, 1474. We need to go back three years to 1471, and there is an, a certain archbishop, archbishop newly elected archbishop of Cologne. His name is Rubeck. I don't know if that's <laughs> my German is horrible. I'm pretty sure that's right. Rubeck. Uh, it's probably it's probably way off. Anyways, I'm gonna stop looking like an ass. Uh, he is not loved by his people or by the people he has authority over. Many many major towns are on the verge of revolt because of this man that he towns that he has authority over now obviously he doesn't want to lose this position he doesn't want to lose control and he goes to Frederick the third who is the uh, Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire and he's like hey guys why don't you chill down a little bit and the people are like uh, no so he's the Archbishop's a little desperate so he goes to Charles Charles the bolt now he actually, uh, his father, Charles the Bold's father, which is Philip the Good, actually has allied himself with the newly elected Archbishop of Cologne. So they've got a bit of a relationship there, but it's not just that relationship on why Charles would just be like, you know what, you're friends with my dad, I'm gonna show up and help you out. There's actually much more to it. Uh, the Archbishop was paying him 200,000 florins to be his protector so basically to deal with any any kind of uprising and that's what he's doing now some say that Charles the Bold was using this as an opportunity to conquer land for himself he's like yeah I'll help you out Archbishop <laughs> you know like sure sure thing buddy um, but uh, we it's a debate I, I assume so yeah that's what he's doing here he's got his army he's got some English mercenaries I think he also has some Italian mercenaries as well now his original target was Cologne because well it's the Archbishop of Cologne he wants to tame Cologne but he was worried there's another city that he was passing by which is Neuss and he felt that if he just walked by it that could be an issue because while he's sieging Cologne this city's garrison could show up behind him and be a problem so he thought okay I gotta stop at Neuss and then I'll go to Cologne and so he begins the siege of Neuss in 20 uh, on the 29th of July 1474 and things got I mean this is just it's it's not funny but it is kind of funny on how just Murphy's law the siege becomes now if you've never heard of Murphy's Murphy's law it basically means what can go bad will go bad or <laughs> did I say that right 
what could go bad will happen. <laughs> I'm just the worst. Anyways, that's Murphy's Murphy's Law. So what happens here is that he, you know, he's setting up the siege. There's rivers nearby, which are represented in the game right here. The Rhine, which actually has two little islands in them. And he thought, I, you know, I should control these islands so I can stop any ships coming by and trying to drop off supplies for the city. And he does, he, he takes over those little islands, but uh, they, they counterattack, and it's a struggle. And eventually, Charles the Bold and his Burgundians lose those islands. Uh, so it's a little, it's it's a cool little engagement. How cool would it be to see a total war with with like smaller locations that you can uh, you can fight for during a siege? That'd be pretty sick. Little side note. Anyways, there is a funny story. Again, not super funny, kind of tragic, but. It's kind of funny. It's not funny. Uh, but the English are ordered, they're mercenaries, so they're fighting for gold. They're ordered to attack a gate. Uh, it fails. The English are getting upset because they feel like they're not getting paid properly. And they're starting to get a little wild. They're getting a little wild. And Charles goes over there and he's like, hey, hey, boys, how about you calm down a little bit, okay? I'm going to pay you. Don't worry. The siege will be over by Christmas. You know, that, that classic saying. And uh, they were inhabited, so what did the English do? <laughs> they started letting loose some arrows towards Charles the Bold. And rumor breaks out that he's dead. And the Burgundians are pissed. And what do they do? They start butchering the English. <laughs> they just start slaughtering the English. And again, that's not funny. It's sad. But it's just kind of like, man, that. imagine thinking... Oh, these guys are upset. I'm just going to talk to them. I'm going to reach out, help them out, you know, let them know that I have some empathy for them. Nope, it just leads to butcher. Uh, and uh, yeah, total nightmare. So uh, eventually what happens is that a relief force shows up. And I think that's what the players here are simulating. Uh, this is the relief force. Uh, and now, it, historically, once the relief force shows up, which by the way took forever to show up, so this is Frederick the Third leading this relief force, took forever because his men were getting in drunken brawls at taverns along the way, and there's many like issues on disciplined soldiers, which I, again hilarious, funny, um, but it finally they show up, and when they do, they they sign a truce, and things calm down. And the Germans are interacting with the Burgundians, and they're just, you know, they're they're hanging out, having a good time. And all of a sudden, the Germans start picking on the Burgundians, and fighting starts happening again. And they start killing each other. And it takes the Pope to be like, hey, guys, if you don't cool it, you're both going to be in timeout. You're both going to be excommunicated. Uh, so then that was like, all right, fine, we're, we're going to be done. And then that's when they, you know, they, they finally... The siege ends in the 27th of June of 1475, so basically a year later. So it it really didn't lead to much. There was some skirmishing, you know, some small, small little engagements, but nothing like full fledged. So what you see here is just like a what if, like what if they, what if Charles the Bold like fully went in, even when the Holy Roman Empire showed up with a, with a relief force. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And again, that's my very simplistic and almost made up. Not made up. I didn't, of course, I didn't make it up. That's what I read. But I, you know, I kind of spiced it up a little bit, add some flair to the story uh, just for entertainment sake. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. All right, let's go ahead and check out the factions here and uh, see what we got going on. So this, I believe, is a three verse three. Uh, so out in the pitch area, so we're gonna have like a little pitch battle. We have some, we have the English. So again, they're representing the mercenaries. I believe is mostly longbowmen, but we also have some uh, cav and pole arms and, and sergeants what and whatnot. Over in the sieging area across the river, uh, we do have one attacking army, which is the Burgundians. So very cool to see them bringing bringing crossbows. Let's see if Charles the Bold over here. Duke's bodyguard. Uh, well, we'll just pretend it's Charles the Bold. I thought Charles the Bold was in the game. I'm not sure. Let's go to the final army way over on the other side. By the way, my mouse is broken. So, like, my mouse wheel. Like, see how? Watch. Like, it just doesn't want to scroll in. It's so annoying. I got to get a new one. Like, yes. every time. Like, I have the worst luck with, with mice. Uh, so, we've got Brabant. So, very cool. Uh, 
So Broadband on the battlefield. Uh, I, I don't know if they were in the battle, but it's cool to see them nonetheless. So those are the attackers. Let's go ahead and look at the defenders really quick. I know I'm taking a long time. We have some Swiss over here. So we got the Swiss faction, uh, which I don't know how to pronounce, so I just call them Swiss. And then over on the other side, let's see if we can... They're kind of all mixed around here, so uh, we got to try to find... Okay, yeah, we have Lorraine. So the, the Duchy of Lorraine on the battlefield. And then finally, we have the Holy Roman Empire, which is mostly on the field here. So are you guys ready? Let's do this. Sorry, that was a lot of talking. That was like 10 minutes of talking. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. And again, I'll always have that timestamp down there uh, for those of you who, who wanted to skip. Now, we're going to start off here with some juicy artillery hits. The Holy Roman Empire bring in that artillery. And it's already ripping through this infantry, the English infantry. So they're going to have to try to be aggressive here. Obviously, you can't just sit back and let them shoot you to death. Uh, that is a great way of losing morale and your troops being like, I don't know what the... Dude, could you imagine? Like, seriously, could you imagine if they had a feature in the game where you start doing stupid stuff and you, you, you're, you like, losing tons of, like... You're, or you're, you're getting a lot of casualties. I, I, I always want to say losing casualties. I don't know why. It's like, are they coming back alive? Like, how does that work? Anyways, you start losing the battle, and the soldier's are like, I don't think this guy knows what the hell he's doing. You know, like, when you, you know when you zoom in and you hear the soldiers talk? It's like, I don't, I don't think this guy, he doesn't know what the hell is going on. Uh, that would be awesome, but I don't think they do that. So... <laughs> Over in the front, we got the retinue longbows. They just need to get into range a little bit, and they will wreck. All right, they will destroy. I'm a little worried about the artillery, but honestly, the artillery, it hasn't gotten too many hits. You can see that it's mostly missing. It's getting a couple hits here and there, but like even a lot of the men who got hit here killed like one guy. He's like, man, I hate Mondays. <laughs> like, like this. Uh, another Monday. <laughs> Over here, come, here comes more cannonballs coming in, just wrecking these soldiers. And they're doing the smart move here. Keep moving, don't stop. Uh, maybe even spread out your lines so they're really thin. Uh, that way, if they come ripping through your ranks, they only go through like two ranks instead of four or five ranks. But it looks like their archers are finally in position. As you can see, they're kind of shifting a little bit. Let's also not forget about the deadly calf. The English knights on the battlefield. I don't, I don't know why I said it like that. But yeah, they're on the battlefield and they are ready to charge. I think they're kind of waiting for an opportunity. Maybe uh, waiting for some infantry to be exposed or archers to be exposed. But while that's going on, let's see what else is going on on the siege part of the wall attack part of the siege. Uh, so we've got the uh, Brabant. We have the Brabantian knights moving up and getting ready to take control of these walls. And at the same time, we have uh, the Burgundians who are making a, making an advance on this side of the wall, which these are two really good walls, mostly open, not a lot of things in the way. They should be able to get most of these siege towers on these walls and, you know, mass attack with their troops. Now, there are some intense artillery fire going on. Look at that. Not really killing too many. Honestly, I would, I would wait for the artillery. I usually never use artillery right away at the start of the battle uh, because you might get a siege tower like this, but what, they killed one guy? I think it's better to wait until you're closer towards the late game and they're starting to, you know, clump up troops and attack choke points. And, you know, then that's when, when you use the, uh, the good old siege siege stuff uh, let's go back over here though where oh we got okay oh my goodness we got a charge from the english knights look at them classic medieval play right there it's like my lord what do you want us to do send in the knights <laughs> you know like that was that was the go-to strat if you had them if you had the knights like hey yeah just send in the knights bro <laughs> It's kind of like those new players in Total War when they just, like, drag, click, attack. You know, like, that's that's the medieval equivalent. Like, send the knights. Uh, but, yeah, that's a nice little um, cab charge. And then uh, right behind that cab charge, we've got a lot of fire arrows coming in, trying to weaken the morale. Look at they're lighting the trees on fire over here. It looks like the army is a little little unorganized but as we can see another rear kind of like a rear charge of cab from the english cab 
going after the enemy cab. They're, they're going for the serpent's head. If they can take out that leader, uh, that, that's going to help morale a ton or really weaken the enemy morale. Uh, but they're going to go ahead and disengage there and reform. So those those knights are definitely getting their their uh, their work in. But why are they falling back? Uh, are they going to completely fall back? I mean, I understand the reasoning behind it because the choke point over there, you could hold off against so many with so with so few, but what was the point of going out there, you know, and, and only to go back? I guess they realized, you know what, these knights are a little bit of a problem. And there they go, charging a column formation of infantry. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Juicy charges. How I've missed the juicy cab charges. So, very good job there. Archer fire coming down, softening up the halberds. And we got more cav moving in as well. And they are running down. It looks like these archers are out of position. So, this is some very sloppy play by the Holy Roman Empire. As they are kind of letting their army get eaten bit by bit by the English knights. You can see some infantry breaking over there. This is a huge loss for the defenders. I mean, even if the Holy Roman Empire were to be defeated in the open field, which most likely would have happened, but nonetheless, they could have done more damage. You know, like maybe the English would have won out here, but still they would have like killed a ton of the English to make them almost, you know, worthless as they move into the city. What is going on? What is the reasoning? Why? Why? Why did you charge out only to just leave as soon as the ba the battle begins? I don't know, but the Holy Roman Empire is paying for it. Uh, we do have some halberds that are putting up a good fight. See, oh, it sucks to see halberds in this kind of situation because halberds are a late game unit. You want to save them for the final stand. They're so good and so annoying to fight head on. But you've got a halberd unit almost completely healthy. Now surrendering, laying down their arms, and being taken prisoner. So let's go over to the other side of the battle where the wall fight has begun. Um, we've got Brabant Knights who are scaling the walls. They're taking on some Bra Brabanzion basically soldiers of Lorraine <laughs> so they're having a good fight over here also we've got a little bit of a, a, a wall charge but they're also charging down over into the streets what are these these some Pavi spear sergeants they probably won't hold too long here I mean they're not gonna get a lot of kills they might hold for a little bit because they're Pavi spears but yeah they're having a tough time against these uh, these spearmen now back over here, the fighting has begun as well. It looks like the defenders are giving up the walls. They are not going to let them take the walls. And, uh, yeah, they're just going to, like, build up their troops. Now, this is a dangerous game to play because if the defenders have archers set up, they could easily fire into the walls and they would get really good flanking shots on these soldiers because of the way, you know, they'll be facing either forward or backwards and their side will be open to archer fire. But it looks like there really isn't any archers set up here. I guess there's a couple over here, but yeah, I get it. I get it. He's got some crossbows over here. Not a great angle. I mean, a lot of the shots, I don't know. I think he could get a lot closer. Like if you put the crossbows right here and then fired, I mean, oh, juicy targets, man. Look at this. This is a ripe peach ready to be plucked and you just bite into it and just the juices the juice is flowing all over the place it's delicious peach delicious peach anyway so uh the swordsmen are holding the gates the the defenders are putting up a little bit of a stand this is the uh, swiss troops so they're they are putting up a little bit of a stand and i love the i love the uh, little shoulder armor here i don't know the correct uh terminology for this but uh it's really cool. It's almost like a, a samurai. You know how the samurai have like much bigger versions of that? It's pretty interesting. So a nice ferocious fight in the streets. Up on the top. We've got more ruthless fighting. By uh, dismounted knights of Burgundia. The Burgundians. 
Burgundia. <laughs> uh, and then... Now, okay, finally, finally, the Holy Roman Empire is like, okay, calm down, guys. We can stop panicking. Sure, our commander totally freaked out, but we've got it under control. The spears are in the front. They've got a tight choke point. It's going to be very tough to attack. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at this. Look at the knights just like, oh, oh, oh. I mean, could you, I mean, seriously, seriously, guys, go back in time. You're a spearman right here. You see knights marching down the street in an organized formation. You know, not quite a shield wall, but tightly packed together, going for you. I mean, talk about the exchange of words going on between these two sides. Just ruthless. I mean, it would be so scary. It would be so intimidating and just pure violence and aggression and anger and just coming out in these front lines, it would be crazy. It, it would be a little bit like War of Rights, but not nearly as toxic. <laughs> if you're a War of Rights fan, you'd get it. But if you don't, you, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Anyways, but the, the infantry are having a good old fight here. And um, it's got a little laggy, which is uh, no surprise. 1212 AD, it's a very intense mod, and this is a very big battle. But the knights should be able to handle themselves very well. It's just going to take some time to get through these spearmen. And they are mixing in some, like, halberd polearm type units. And the archers are doing a good job of firing way in the back. Mostly taking out the crossbows. But honestly, guys, crossbows aren't going to get great hits here. Because their own, their own troops are in the way. That's why sometimes when I play this game, especially on defense, I like to mix it up a little bit. Where I'll bring, like, two crossbows and two, like, recurve bow type units. That way I have the ability to be able to fire you know, an, an, an arching shot, or if I need a direct armor piercing shot, I have the crossbows. Yeah, but ooh, ooh, artillery though. This is what I'm talking about. Look at this huge blob of English knights, English, uh, are these sergeants? Uh, but they are just really piling up here. Where's that arty? Where is that arty? I gotta try to find it. Um, I think it might be, oh yeah, it's way in the back here. Anyways, let's not get too too hung up about that that little choke point battle let's let's go back over to the walls and you can see that Brabant is making some progress they're off the walls some of the troops and they are in the streets taking on the defenders which are mostly spears so I'm getting a little worried for the defenders I, I don't think this is going too well for the defenders I mean at the, at the start you had the the outer pitch battle that went disastrously <laughs> for the Holy Roman Empire. They've kind of collected themselves again, but it's not going too hot over there. Uh, it looks like the defenders... I mean, they are putting up a good fight, especially over here. I think it's going a little bit better compared to against Brabant. But the Swiss here look like they're doing a decent job of, of inflicting damage. But we're starting to see now some crossbow sergeants. And this is where things get interesting and where these cross crossbows could potentially rack up like mass number of kills i mean we're talking 100 200 300 400 500 kills uh if they really rack up those kills so we'll see once they get in position if you are the defender this is panic mode this is where you go okay crossbows hurry up and fire their crossbows before they open fire because this is going to be a uh, disaster also, I know, wait, did the gate open? Oh, the English controlled the gate. The attackers controlled the gate. So they were able to squeeze in some of these medium polearm infantry. Some French word that I don't know how to pronounce. Basically, it's like a halberd. So big, long, spear-type weapons. They're taking on some axe sergeants, though. It's a bloody clash between these foes. Foot nobles attacking the flank. Axe sergeants attacking the other flank. I mean, it's a rough situation for the French. Or, I'm sorry. Not the French. These are not Frenchmen. These are Burgundians. Right? It's a tough situation for them. Burgundy. As they, uh, as they continue to... They, they're getting kind of sandwiched, but they are making progress. And look at them just pile in. They're like... Oh, man, imagine being in the back of the gate and you're, like, 
your sergeant or like your commander's just like go 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 it's just like there's no room i can't get i can't it's like come on go <laughs> don't worry someone will die and you'll take his place oh man but yeah the halberds are doing a great job and they are slicing through slicing through and making progress now they are losing some morale because of the overwhelming uh, surroundingness the flankiness <laughs> Uh, but they should be okay. Um, and then we've got more fighting on the walls, which the Swiss are holding on to. Let's go back over to the bridge and see how this is uh, progressing here. Where, okay, the English have kind of decided to spread out their troops a little bit. Ooh, archer fire getting dangerously close to their own troops. But I think this is worth it. Definitely some friendly fire going on, but mostly the enemy is dying. And that's a sacrifice I'm willing to take. Uh, but no, the uh, the soldiers are doing a good job, and again, this is just a grind. I don't see the English losing here. I don't see the Holy Roman, Roman Empire winning, but maybe that's not necessarily the point. Maybe the Holy Roman Empire just wants to hold back the English while the, their allies fight off in, in the walls or by the walls. But you can see that artillery, and here comes another shot. Let's see. Here it comes, here it comes. Yeah, yeah, that artillery was giving him a headache, and that's why he's now moved his forces behind the the, the uh, little the slums here. Not really slums, but outer uh, buildings. And then we've got the general, Frederick III. He's like, hold your ground. Hold your ground. All right, I'm going back. <laughs> They're like, oh, look, look, it's Frederick III inspired. Is he, to, is he coming to join us? He's like, I'm just going to yell at you, increase your morale, and run away. <laughs> like, oh, okay. What an asshole. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, no. Uh, didn't. Uh, obviously, the player went over there and used some general ability to boost the morale of the troops holding whatever kind of boost he used, trying to help these men. And we are seeing some professional troops. I think we're seeing some Zweihander uh, in the mix, some pole arms i don't know all kinds of different uh you know soldiers in this big blob oh this has got to be one of the last places on the battle right now where you want to be i mean this is like hastings hastings thick like you you die here and your your body's just like still standing because it's so tightly packed but look at that artillery oh my god they're like these guys are like what happened? Oh my god. That is risky. That is risky. But, oh, they are getting some fantastic artillery hits. So, the, in a way, the Holy Roman Empire is kind of turning around. I was about to shift over to the other side of the battlefield, but those artillery shots, they, they got me wanting more. Uh, that was juicy. That might, that might really help them win this engagement if they can keep that up. Though... Keep in mind, the men are like, okay, first off, the emperor looks like he's going to help us out. Leaves. Now my friend just died to a friendly uh, cannonball. <laughs> sure, it ripped through the enemy, but it ripped through my friend's chest first. Uh, but yeah, it's, the morale is, is going down. Boom. Boom, boom. The archer fire. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's it. That friendly fire, man. But again, they got some good kills, but this is where the English need to capitalize and need to push and they need to take this bridge. And this is where basically the siege is gonna be attacked on all sides. But look at this, the defenders are holding on here. They are holding on and they are pushing the attackers back. My goodness, my good golly. We've got a situation here. Let's see. I, I think the defenders are going all in. So sometimes in siege battles, the way they work, right, is you have the outer wall. And sometimes you think, okay, you know what? I'm going to go all in with my troops, as in I'm not giving up the wall. I'm going to fight around the, the outer wall. Or you could be like, okay, I've kind of lost too many men. I've killed a good, a good amount of them. I'm going to fall back to the inner keep of the settlement. Well, it looks like in this situation, the defenders are going all in. I don't really see a lot of reserves. 
There's a couple, mostly archers, which makes sense. Their archers are sitting back firing. We've got some archers up on the walls firing back. Militia Bowman, not the greatest of archers, but an arrow does damage, and it's going to hurt. And they're in a very good position, so they will rack up kills. In fact, they are at 33 kills as we speak with, uh, you know, with very healthy numbers. So we'll see um, how this plays out, but it's hard to tell. It, it really is hard to tell to see who's going to to take this one. I still think the attackers have the edge, but I do give credit to the defenders for being ruthless and not falling back too quickly. Or maybe he should have, uh, uh, maybe they should have fell back, but they're like, nah, balls to the wall, going in. So yeah, juicy fighting going on there. That's always good to see. Back over here. Looks like we had a couple uh, a couple troops who returned from routing. Uh, the English... Oh my god, look at... The, oh, look at this. Look at this. Holy slaughter. The street is red. This looks like it was like a crazy party and they just had so much wine. No, this is blood, guys. This is, I mean, imagine the stink of this, you know? Just pure iron and BO be disgusting. And like, you know? You know, it's not like, I mean, there is a myth uh, a lot of times that like medieval people were dirty and never bathed, which uh, is not true. Uh, they were clean and it was colorful. It wasn't dark and dreary. It was colorful, clean people. I, I don't know where that came about. I think even as a kid, I believed that until, you know, you start learning about history. But medieval people were decent people. <laughs> like, you know, it's just like they're like dirty inbreds or something. No, they, they were, they were, you know, like, uh, anyways. Anyways, uh, let's go back over here where things are now picking up where on the other side of the battle it was all about that bridge battle now it's all about this gate battle going on where oh axe sergeants are going in we've got a nice uh du ducal heavy foot guard unit uh that is set to flank and that's why those axemen charged in it was their last little glory charge but they break look at this man he's like don't leave me behind brothers <laughs> they just walk over him like flee flee for your lives and then they break through the gate. And I think this is going to be the last stand of the defenders at this gate. So it seems that the defenses are falling apart. And the attackers are finally getting their first bit of ground here in this settlement. But did they lose too many troops? Well, if you look at the balance of power, it's... um. Wow, there's a lot of units still left on the battlefield. But if you look at the balance of power... It's still pretty close. I've, especially in 1212, where it is a mod, it's not perfectly balanced. I've seen way worse for defenders. By the way, the yellow part of the balance of power is the attackers, red is the defenders. I've seen way worse for the defenders where they've come back and won it because they had some sturdy, you know, halberds and archers that just slaughtered the attackers um, in choke points. So it's still very much possible that they win this battle. Uh, Brabant is having a tough time. Like, this is actually really close. Brabant, I mean, he is starting to break the defenders here. What is, this is uh, the Duchy of Lorraine. He is starting to break through them. But he lost a lot of men in this, uh, this fight here. In fact, I think he's going to lose over here, where we've got a nice flanking maneuver by the Duchy of Lorraine, who are surrounding these men. So very cool. Very cool. We also have a cav unit over here who are dismounted. Yeah, we got dismounted knights. Like he, they were on horseback. He told them to get off the horses and join the fight in the streets, which I'm not a fan of. I always try to keep my knights on horseback because you do get a ton of like charge bonuses that you don't want to miss out on. I usually only dismount them when the enemy only has like halberds and it's a choke point situation. Then I'll dismount them. But even then, you want to look out for uh, flanking opportunities. So don't always just jump the gun and dismount your knights. 
but I do it when I'm super desperate and I need more troops or whatever to hold a choke point. So yeah, they are uh, they're doing a good job here of trying to protect this uh, this little uh, stairway uh, to the wall. Uh, we also have a general. This is the Duke, the Duke Foot Guard. He's like, come on, man. I'm not gonna let my my countrymen die. So he's gonna charge in and, and support his uh, his fellow countrymen. Back when the wealthy actually cared about the poor. So, yep, great fight on the walls. And um, we've got some intense fighting over at these walls too, but still, it, it's, it's close over here. It's close. And it, it's almost like, it's kind of frustrating in a way. It's like, God, when are the attackers gonna break through? They've done it over here. But when is Broadband gonna break through? We got a little bit of a cab battle here. And they are getting slaughtered. What is going on here? They're running into these polearm uh, pole troops and just getting butchered. So cool little engagement there, but it's a slaughter for the defenders. Same thing over here. They're just cleaning up what's left. Some stubborn defenders who, you know, they, they see that it's it's over, but they're gonna fight to the bitter end. They're gonna fight for their country. So a nice little struggle. Very cool, very cool. They're gonna fight it out, but unfortunately these men are these foot nobles. See, that's uh oh, I hate to see that. I hate to see that a very good unit like foot nobles being surrounded and breaking with such numbers. I mean they're not exactly healthy, uh, but they were much healthier like a minute ago. And oftentimes or if I'm ever in a situation where I'm like, you know what? This really good unit is not gonna do well here because they're gonna be surrounded and they're not gonna be as effective try to get them back follow them back to the choke points because these really good units could save the day in choke point situations that's what these battles are really all about battles of attrition maintaining good units falling back to to inner choke points so a nice little struggle um and the defenders on the verge of defeat but the defenders still have a ton of troops let's still get what the english are doing which they've given up. Look at this. Okay, so interesting. They didn't completely give up. But it seems like they're sending like half of their army. Look at they're going the long way around. They are sending a good chunk of their army around the flank through the Rhine. Which, uh, I think I forgot to mention this, but Charles the Bull did have some pontoons, which they used to cross uh, the, the bodies of water or rivers or, or whatnot. Uh, so we can just pretend they're doing that. Uh, but yeah, they're going to go all the way around. I think it's because Broadband is in need of support. He's going to go all the way around and get on these siege towers and be that extra support. But let's see. I don't know. It's it's tough to tell. Broadband against Lorraine. It's been a brutally close fight. Knights duking it out on the walls. We always love to see it. You love to see it? You love to see it. Another reason that you want to save your elite troops for the late game is that usually the elite troops have better morale. Not usually, almost always. Uh, they have better morale compared to, you know, lower tier units. And when it's the end of the battle and you've taken mass casualties, sometimes that affects the morale of your troops. And you want to be able to make sure these troops stay in the fight regardless of the casualties. And the best way to do that is I always have the weaker troops be the initial defense and then save the elite troops for the final stand. Because they have the discipline, even if overwhelmed by numbers and overwhelmed by casualties, will fight mostly to the bitter end. Now, I am seeing some English knights in the background maneuver over here. I think he's shifting over to his ally because they've taken the gate. 
If you take the gate, you can charge in your cav. And there's going to be some opportunities here. Possibly, you know, getting some archers off guard. I do love, I, I do love, or like, I guess, um, the outer defense. So, it's, okay, let me explain what I'm talking about here. The defenders have decided not to just instantly go back and hold this ramp. They actually have a little, little outer defense, which, uh... I like it because it, it buys a little time now it, it's tough it's it, so basically by having your troops ex, troops extended like this it makes you less of a sitting duck because imagine if they had all their troops in this one area it's archer it's gonna be an archer field day just like just fire like if I was an archer I'd just like hey check this out eyes closed fire probably got a kill because you're just firing up on this platform but out here it's a little bit more spread out it's harder to get targets but archers are still going to be a problem, and you got to make sure you have your own archers, which they do. But watch this, guys. These archers right here. here. Let me go ahead and speed up the camera. Oh, that volley. Yeah, and they're just firing into these crossbowmen. These crossbowmen, they're outnumbered. They didn't even get a chance to fire back. I think they're going to stand in front of the, uh, the pikemen here, the Swedish pikemen. Or this, I'm sorry, not sweet. Is the Sw the Swiss pikeman? That's such an American thing to do. All right, knights are moving down. Look at this, but they're gonna the Brabantian knights are gonna meet them. Sort of, they're kind of kind of they're gonna they're gonna walk by each other and be like, hey, what's up? You going to charge my archers? Yeah. You going to charge my archers? Yeah. Now they do they do meet a little bit here and try to slow them down. Nice little charge by the attackers, trying to kill the defending archers. And they even get the pikemen off guard, which is really good. Over on the other side, ooh, ooh. Big cab charge over here, and <laughs> it ain't holding up. It's not holding up well. Um, Sergeant Swordsman with the crossbows, who I assume are out of ammo. They are having a tough time against these knights. And I, you know, you love to see it. There's troops still fighting up on the walls. Still fighting up on the walls. Joy. Just joy. Uh, they've taken a tower. And because you, oh my god, did this tower just destroy this uh, siege tower? That's hilarious. <sighs> For some reason in Attila, when you take a tower, it crumbles. The tower's just like, hey! You're not the person. You're not the people who built me. Self-destruct. But once again, I mean, these soldiers are still holding over here, but they're wavering. But they are holding a little bit. Look at, see, they're wavering and then they stop and then they go back. So they are buying time. Oh, juicy arty. Oh, give me that sweet, sweet juice. Let's see. Oh yes. Oh yeah. That was delicious. They just took out a ton of cav. That's a huge win for the defenders. But uh, that cav's going to look for other options. I think they're going to go for the general. Which I think is a losing battle. Especially after losing so many knights to, to, to the fiery balls of, of death. They're going to charge in here and get a juicy charge. Come on, let's go. General's not even paying attention. So they're not going to be able to pull off a counter charge. And there you have it. They wow, they actually did a lot of damage with that charge. I'm curious uh, if they're going to be able to, to kill the general here. So we're down to the last uh, 10 minutes of the battle. Here comes another another charge. This is from the uh, Swiss general trying to support the Frederick III as he battles against these uh, Burgundian knights. And my nose is running for some reason. I'm so sorry. That must be really annoying and disgusting hearing me go, mmm, tasty. Uh, but yeah, there's a nice little flanking charge. Finally, it gets these uh, crossbows and these sergeants to break. Which honestly, I thought they were going to break a long time ago. So, with that out of the way, um, they still have <laughs> these. Oh, I, I feel for the broadband player. You're still up here. You're still fighting my men. Like, how frustrating. And there's some archers still firing over here as well. I think... Uh, where are these archers coming from? Oh, it's... The, oh, jeez. It's the arrow towers. It seems like archers because it's like an MG nest up here. Like, da 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 
Just open and fire. But uh, broadband, I think this is, no, oh, no, this is uh, Burgundians. They're sending over um, some troops over to help the wall battle. We also have some knights moving around. I assume the knights are going to capture the arrow towers or the gate over there so they can stop the bleeding, stop the, the, the archer fire. Hey, let's actually go to the bridge. I think there's some fighting going on at the bridge. Look at this. Very cool. Very, very cool. We got some spears trying to hold off some knights. It's actually a pretty cool area. The enemy general is dead. Whoa! Enemy general is dead. Let's check this out. Oh no! Oh wait, that was I think it was the Swiss general. Was it Frederick the Third? I don't think th I don't think so, because he's sitting back here chilling. He's just vibing. Where is he? Is this him? Oh, this is him. <laughs> He's like, what? Look the same. Do you know how long I worked on this crown? I mean, do you know how long I forced someone to work on this crown? So yeah, he's still alive, but he's worried, man. He's like, I, I don't know, guys. Maybe we should sign sort of, some sort of truce. Let him take the city or something, because uh, I, I don't think we got enough men. They do have some foot bodyguard. These guys look, whoa, whoa. Okay. First off, I was like mesmerized with our black armor, but then I was like, whoa, look at a hat. Look at that hat. What is that hat? That is epic. He's like, he's like, you know, guys, I really want to stand out on the battlefield. He's like, have you tried wearing any gold bracelets? He's like, no, 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 no. I, I want something bigger. I want something that says, wow. Something that's, that just says, oh, wow, you're an individual. There he is. He's like, what about what what about this this green elf hat? <laughs> yes, yes, you own it. Ah, oh, come on, I want to see him in action. Anyways, uh, <laughs> hopefully we see him uh, fight it out later on in the battlefield. Oh no, the bridge is lost. Great flanking cab charge. That's going to slaughter the crossbows over here. Cause them to break. Archers are like, oh crap, we should probably try to fall back. This cav unit's very weak though. Though I think they're gonna send another one over. Yep, they are. Man, that archer fire is ruthless from the arrow towers. This is cool. And the knights. This guy's covered in blood. Very good, very good. Oh yeah, this is a this is gonna be a huge chain route. This is the kind of chain route that might make a like like a like a faction wide chain route or an entire team side chain route. You know, you've got units that potentially could have gotten so many more kills. Speaking of kills, no, that can't be right. Come on, let me let me see how many kills you got. They got 58 kills. Not that great. I feel like they could have gotten a lot more if they just fell back to the, inner, to the uh, inner works of the city. But I do appreciate them holding the bridge. That is very chat of them. Very cool. Very fun to watch that. Makes it interesting. Makes it fun. You know, I, I don't like when players like instantly fall back without putting up some sort of a fight. And it's cool that the defenders have been putting up more than just some for, sort of fight. They've been putting up a huge fight. So the frames are definitely getting better. <laughs> They're fighting the good fight over here. They're fighting the good fight. Oh, artillery. The men are running. Stand and fight, damn Artillery you. coming in. Pavis are moving up. We got some Pavis spearmen ready to embrace the enemy in their final stand. Artillery open and fire, but only... Ooh. Talk about threading the needle. It, it nearly hits this wall, but just misses everything in a small gap of the enemy lines. That's unfortunate for the defenders. Very lucky for the attackers. Look who came back. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. You gotta be careful with those fire rounds because you could burn down your own city. That's not what you want. 
Oh, that was a great hit. Oh, and another one. Just burning these heavy billmen. So this unit, this unit right here, that that's breaking. Oh, and just died to rubble. Uh, they came back right in time to delay the heavy billmen to get shot up by the artillery. So that was pretty good timing for them. Here comes the troops. It's like we will take this this hill. And we've got a nice line here of pikemen, which honestly are probably just going to get chewed apart from archer fire, which I think that is the case. Yep, here it comes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that's sick. Look at that. Enemy units have rallied in Look at that. That's a cool shot right there. Thumbnail. <laughs> Oh man, that just seeing the troops marching around in the background, these late period troops with the fireballs of justice flying overhead. That was awesome. The enemy are losing ground. The enemy are losing ground. So, they're fighting the good fight. I mean, four minutes left in this battle replay. Now, I want to make it clear. See, this is the problem. This is the problem right here. I was kind of looking around. I was like, you know, the defenders, they got a lot. And it's going to be tough to deal with the defending units. But then I saw this over here. And I saw a bunch of knights and some axemen. I'm like, oh, this is this in a huge force. And this is the English. The English finally made it into the city. And uh, all they have to do is break through here, and they probably win this siege battle. And, oh, yeah. You can see the defenders are moving in because they... I don't think they want to deal with the archers, so they're kind of closing in. Try to cancel that. But look at this formation here. we got heavy billmen kind of forming a very wide... A V shape with the uh, the du Duchal heavy foot guard, the Ducal. Chow. Oh, and we got a general, the Holy Roman Emperor. He's like Frederick. Frederick the Third's like, you know, guys, I think we should call it quits. Maybe we should form some, sign some sort of truce, let them have the city. I don't know. He's he's gonna want Cologne. That's what he's gonna want. Frederick the Third. He's like, nah, just keep fighting, guys. Just keep fighting. It's okay if we're taking prisoner. It's like, yeah, maybe for you. You're the emperor. They're not gonna kill you. They want that sweet, sweet, juicy ransom. I'm a peasant. They're gonna slaughter me. I, I ain't worth nothing. Which, by the way, peasants greatly worth a lot in my heart. Oh yeah, they're breaking through over here as well. Sorry, yeah, what I was saying is, yeah, peasants, man. They farm. They're, they Without peasants, there's no one. They, they make things. They're not merchants. They're peasants. They go in, they farm, they create food, they create items. Awesome. The knights protect them. So Archer Fire going in and uh, going after the artillery in the back here, trying to shoot them in the back. But the artillery, it, oh, you got to make sure. Yeah, they mostly used up their ammo. I was going to say, you, you always want to make sure you use up all that ammo at the end of the battle. You don't want to lose the battle and still have like 50% of your ammo. It just won't feel good. Feels bad, man. But yeah, I think it's quite clear who's going to win this battle. We're down to the last minute in 36. So we're going to go ahead and just fast forward a tad. And uh, watch the remaining of the defenders hold off here. So in this, it's not completely made up, I guess. But in this made up scenario of, of Charles actually going all in and, and taking on this, this city, uh, they, he actually wins it here. Now, this, of course, is not exactly a simulation. It would be cool to have a very detailed simulator. Not just like the, you know, totally epic simulator or whatever. But a detailed historical simulator to see like how certain events would play out um, if if like for example uh, 
Agincourt if it didn't rain, you know? Stuff like that. That would be so cool. That would be, and it's like super fine detail, you know? Not just like a couple troops represented on the battlefield. No, you have, you have longbows, you have King Henry V, you have French knights, you have sergeants, you know, you have everything. You have the exact map laid out, you know, it would be sick. It would be awesome. But anyways, yeah, this is the last. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Look who it is. Oh, fancy hat guy. There he is. There he is. Fancy hat guy. Come on, dude. He's got this. We do some slow motion. He's out, he's over there. He's like, hey, guys. He's like <laughs> going to the, uh, the enemy. He's like, do you think I'm an individual? <laughs> do you think I'm special? Well, he didn't die, so that's good. But that's a Pyrrhic victory for the um, the attackers. Let's go ahead and end the replay. I'm gonna need some water after this one. This is a long one. Plus my 12 minute intro didn't exactly help. Uh, but yeah, Cassius V, uh, he's the one who sent this in. Uh, and again, big thank you to all the players here for playing in this battle. Cassius, uh, of course it doesn't show kills. Why? It doesn't show kills, but his knights did fantastic. His archer's doing well. So very good there. Over on the other side, we have the Swiss, who did decent with their swordsmen. A lot of kills, almost 200 with the Onager or the Catapult, so that's very good. Uh, but yeah, uh, very fun fight. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. B again, big thank you to Cassius and all the players here who participated in the battle. Thank you guys so much. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like, a share, subscribe. Help me reach a million. Very close. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you next time on the battlefield.